talk a little bit about on, on June 29th, um, I rolled out the vetoes. And uh, it, was, it was reported in the headlines as a day of reckoning. And in some respects, it, it was a day of reckoning. It was, it was the most that I could do uh, with um, um, the budget that I received from the legislature. It was the most that I could do without having, without having new revenues that were, that were brought in. Uh, we can't fix the problem with, with vetoes alone. We know that. There are real impacts of vetoes. There's real impacts to every Alaskan in what, in what I did. You know, when I gave my state of the state, I said I, was, I, I ran for this job to do the job and not keep the job. I think I proved it on that day with what I did. It was a little unprecedented uh, because it impacted every single Alaskan. Every single Alaskan was impacted by that. And there's never been, I don't think, in the history of our state, a vetoes that you can say that about. That was, that was very, very uh, broad-based. It was not pleasant. It was not something I looked forward to. It's something I had to do. Those impacted lives. I remember riding down the elevator the next day, the very next day, and uh, uh, individuals from on my floor, <clears throat> on, the, on the 17th floor in, in Atwood, uh, had boxes and had stuff in their, in their arms, and, and I didn't really quite grasp what was going on, and it was their last day. And in the midst of all their holding, they reached out and shook my hand and said, thank you for what you're doing. We lost our job because of uh, budget cuts, because of where we are, but we want to thank you as Alaskans for what you're doing. That was, these, these are not theoretical reductions. This is, this is real. This is very real across the state. Um, <clears throat> something that really has gotten my attention in the last um, week has been a, um, a report put out by David Teal. David Teal has been probably a 20-year uh, director of legislative finance, worked for the legislature for, for years and years. David's all about numbers. David, I, I can't remember a time he hasn't been before the legislature as they were their, their representative, their numbers person. And he put out a report following my um, budget reductions, and it was dated July 1. And I'm just going to read one opening sentence from what he said. It was very powerful. His opening sentence was, Alaska is in the midst of of the gravest fiscal crisis in our state's history. Gravest fiscal crisis in our state's history. Unprecedented that, um, sorry about that. Unprecedented that, that David Teal would, um, um, would make those kinds of statements. He's a numbers person, but he, he knows, he recognizes. And I, I urge Alaskans to look at David Teal's report. It's very good about as far as, I mean, it's, it's very factual. It's not pleasant, but it's factual. <clears throat> he acknowledges that the revenues, um, um, we have less than 30 percent of the revenues to, cost, to cover the cost of government. So we're 70 percent, 70 percent is the deficit. He goes on in his report to compare 2013 to 2017 budget. And he acknowledges that from the 2013 budget to 2017 budget of FY17, it's been reduced 44 percent. 44% reduction in spending is, 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 uh, is what he put in his report, a $3.5 billion in reduction. Spending is now at uh, a level, as set forth in his report, and if you don't have his report, certainly get you a copy. We're at 2007 levels. We've come down to 2007 and continuing to, to, uh, to reduce. Now, I say all this about the budget because we hear a lot of times people say, well, what we need to do is we need to cut the budget. Let me, let me just say this. We have cut the budget, and we'll continue to, but there are, there are real impacts. You know, as we sell off, you know, one of the, one of the uh, uh, King Airs, one of the airplanes the state has had for a long time, that has reduced the response capability in rural Alaska, in some cases, by 60 percent. That's very significant in what we're doing as far as the things that are happening uh, across the state as far as reductions. Compared to 2014, in, in FY17 budget, we'll have 2,100 fewer state employees as a result of the budget. That takes in the university, takes in the other, the, the other uh, organizations. So to those that say we haven't been, we haven't been cutting, I say you need to, need to look a little bit closer because there have been significant reductions. <clears throat> the capital budget uh, in 2013 was $2 billion. Now it's $96 million. The operating budget in 2013 was $6 billion, and now it's down to $4.3 billion. I think we have a, have a slide on this someplace. Um, and the under, unrestricted revenue uh, in 2013 was $7 billion, and now it's $1.2 billion. 
And it's interesting, in, 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 in 2013, the, the permanent fund dividend check was $900, and this year it'll be $1,000. So, you know, those that say there's been no, <clears throat> no reductions, no changes, there have been significant. Will there be more? Of course there'll be more. Can there be more? Of course there will be. But we cannot, uh, we, as we know, we cannot completely resolve this issue that uh, solely on, uh, on reductions in, in spending. You know, 60 Alaskans hold the, the future, Alaska future, in their, in their hands. 60 legislators. There's only so much. I, I, I fully have a, 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 a strong respect for the separation of powers, the role that they play. It's a very, it's a very challenging job. My job is, uh, Lieutenant Governor Malat's job is challenging. Theirs is as well. But it's really in their hands. It's really in their hands at, the, at this point. It really is 21, 21 in the House and 11 in the, um, in the Senate. And um, so I don't want to go completely through the, the new Alaska Sustainable Alaska Plan that we presented uh, in December of last year following all the work that was done. I mean, my commissioners, uh, as, I, as I look around, the commissioners that have done so much work on that. But we did that plan so we did not have to do what we did on, on, on June 29th as far as the, the kind of, of uh, reductions that we, that we made. We did that plan, so there would be a there would be a there would be a, a, a plan going forward to say yes, we're going to make some adjustments. We are we're at a new time in Alaska. We're going to make those adjustments, be able to say, but here's where we're going to be. Here's the here's the here's the goal of where where we're going. And so that's why we did that plan. We did not want to shift uh, cost shift to local governments. We did that in the in the uh, uh, I had to do that in a certain degree in the. Um, uh, in the vetoes. We did not want to uh, hurt education in any way. That's the highest priority to Lieutenant Governor Malat and myself in our campaign, in our administration. Education is a very high priority. I guess that just shows how, how challenging it is right now when we actually do make um, reductions in, in education. Um, you know, we are, as I've said before, if everything that we submitted uh, last um, December, every piece of legislation passed, Alaska would move from the 50th or the lowest uh, personal taxes in the nation to the second lowest, but the only the only state with a with a dividend program. So if you add the dividend program, we go back down again to the lowest. So we weren't out, you know, trying to um, do anything that was completely out of out of out of realm or out of, out of reach. It's something that we that we have to do. So we submitted that plan, and I asked for other plans. <clears throat> if there's a better plan, please please bring it to us. And, and no plan came forth. But actually, you know, um, the other day went on a flight to. To Fairbanks, I, it, it sort of struck me that there really is a there really is another plan, and that's the plan. That's the, that's a, that's the no action plan, and, and so we have we have some examples here of what what happens on, under our plan, uh, what we're trying to do uh, under under the um, sustainable Alaska plan, and then the, what happens on the no action plan if that continues to be the plan. I mean the reductions are are so significant, it's it's really hard to fathom. We have over 240 airports in Alaska. The next highest in the nation of airports is Oregon. They have 40 airports. We have 240. As I've said, our, our definition of airport might be different than, than some, but they, are, they provide access in and out. Um, they will be impacted, there's no question about that. Uh, we, are we, gonna, we are already impacting uh, you know, public safety in some of the decisions that I've made. Uh, public transportation have been impacted. Some of the, some of the uh, uh, areas will be serviced from other areas rather than having their own service area right, right nearby. We are already doing that, but but these are the kinds of, of reductions that and and some and some people have said, well, we like this. Boy, I don't know, I don't know. That's a that's a that's a different Alaska. Actually, I'm born in the territory uh, of Alaska. Maybe we, I know. I don't think Alaskans are ready to go back to uh, uh, not having uh, sufficient public safety. Uh, so I, I think that I think the purpose of this is to to show this is the no action plan. This is if we do nothing and we continue to draw down on our savings for a couple of years. This is 36 months. 36 months is what we're looking at. And so we have got to uh, ensure that, that, that this is resolved and resolved as, as soon as possible. You know, we put out a list of things that we, th that we see the budget. I asked um, Pat Pitney, OMB director, to put together a, what would a budget look like under the no action plan? Going forward, we get to that point, what, what, would, ch what would change? I want to see what do you do with, with uh, uh, about $1.2 billion of unrestricted income after the savings is completely gone. It was not done to frighten anybody. It was not done to em embarrass anybody. We just need to know. We need to know what, what, what would Alaska look like. You'd have, um, uh, instead of 300 troopers, you'd have 200 troopers. There'd be 100 troopers across the state. Um, oh, the estimate is probably 14,000 educators would be laid off. Huge numbers. 
closing airports uh, in rural Alaska, that would certainly certainly would happen. Uh, you can see the 80% reduction in, in highway maintenance and in road maintenance. The pioneer homes and veterans homes in Alaska, a real jewel, a pride of what we do. Would be able to, would we be able to afford those? Um, API in Anchorage, Alaska Psychiatric Institute, <clears throat> 1,600 you know residents there. Would that be able to to, to be maintained? We don't think so. Um, the National Guard Search and Rescue, would we be able to, able to fund that and, and pay for that? And that's over uh, 2,000 people uh, from, from various disasters across the state. <clears throat> you know, major changes in, in public health. Um, it, turning uh, some of the permitting process would have to go back to the feds. And I don't say this lightly. I don't say this because we want, we're going to try to scare somebody into and this is This is the, this is what we're facing. This is, this is what we are facing under the no action plan. Um, certainly it'd have a significant impact on, on the economy. There's no question about that. You know, when I've, <clears throat> in the last few weeks I've been speaking, I've, I've always acknowledged and thanked the Senate for their passage of the, of the Permanent Fund Protection Act of the so restructuring of that was not a, that was not a, uh, that was not easy to do. And so I, I want to, again, once, once again, thank them for, for doing that. This year we've had legislation passed that, have, that will bring in $9 million more revenue with a $4 billion gap. The $9 million is, is uh, additional fees and, and fish and wildlife, um, fish and game uh, permit fees, licensing, and whatnot. You know, this, um, what happened on, on the 29th of, of uh, June, when I, when I rolled out the, the vetoes, will be referred to as the good old days in years to come if we don't, if we don't adopt a fiscally balanced plan. I mean, adopt an entire, not the entire plan. I'm not saying just one piece at a time. Some people found it objectionable because there was only one piece at a time, and I understand that. That's why we, submit, we submitted the entire plan. You know, we brought back sales tax this time. It wasn't like we always we, we wanted to add one more piece of tax. Some said we'd rather look at sales tax and income tax. Okay, now they're now now they're both on the table. But you know, who I also want to thank. I want to th thank the state employees. You know, that have sort of endured this. You know, reductions in, in, uh, uh, in the size of government is, is we will right-size the government. There's no question about that. But there are real lives and people involved in that, and there's some uncertainty. So I want to thank the, the, the state employees uh, for uh, continuing to do uh, excellent work during this, this period of uncertainty. I want to thank everyday Alaskans. You know, I can't tell you the number. Um, uh, the, the media just can't capture what, I, what uh, Lieutenant Governor Malat and I experience. You know, I've been, since uh, my announcement, I've been in Homer, I've been in uh, King Salmon, I've been in Knack Neck, I've been in Fairbanks, I've been in, um, uh, in Palmer, Wasilla area, I've been, I've been around the state uh, in, uh, in the Eagle River Bear Paw uh, Festival last Saturday. Person after person after person have come up to me shaking my hand, I don't, and I don't know them. They'll, they'll be, you know, senior citizens, they'll be young people with, with, uh, with children in, in, a, in, you know, pushing them in a stroller. And they'll say, thank you, Governor, for doing what you're doing. Thank you 